Hey everyone, welcome back to Rhythm Railroad. I'm back at my industrial area project. And today what I'm trying to work on is uh, developing some kind of sensor system so that I know when this last car is at the end of this um, hidden area. What's happening here is that um, I have a track running through here and then it's basically the length of this entire section here. But I can't see obviously what's in there. So um, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to just develop some kind of system that tells me that. Now I do have, you know, um, a way to get in there if something goes wrong. Uh, and that's through here. But rather than having to depend on that, I'd rather just know that something's gonna tell me either through a light or through some kind of buzzer or something that um, I'm not gonna hit the wall or have the trains potentially, you know, fall off the track. So um, I think I came up with something that, that's gonna work, but before I get to that, let me just tell you what's going on here. Um, if you've been watching my other videos on, on this project, uh, I decided to build like a, you know, a fake scratch built kind of faux building um, representing, it's going to be a plastic works area, uh, rather industry. And, uh, I just basically took styrene sheets and, and cut them, put some details on them to make it look like a building. And then what I did here on my last video is that I, um, I added this gear reducer and attached this, um, temporary, you know, control post so that when I turn the post, it's uh, slowly bringing down that door. Sorry, I have no support right now because I have no no roof in this building, so it's not able to stay together. But that's basically what I worked on on my last video. Um, so I'm just get this open again. So today, what I'm going to try to do is. Um, install a uh, sensor and I decided you know there's, there's a lot of sensors out there that you could use but I decided to go with uh, an infrared light sensor where once you interrupt the light it will set off a light uh, um, a red light that I can see here um, I don't know if I'm gonna mount it as part of the building like over here somewhere or if I'm just gonna mount it you know my control panels like whatever anywhere just to tell me what that light means but basically when i'm backing this train up you know it's a long it's a long way to back up so kind of lose track of where, where that car is it, where the car is um so i i had purchased a uh Audrino a while back probably about a year ago and I didn't really find much use for it because I was originally going to use it for like turnouts and stuff. And I realized it was, it would just get too, too crazy with that. So, um, I put it away and then, you know, a few days ago, I realized that I could probably use it as a way to control a sensor. So here's my Arduino. It's not an actual Arduino. It's like a cut. It's like an imitation. It's called an Uno, but it works the same way and it's cheaper. Um, so what I did is I uh, went online and I, I read up on infrared sensors and you know these infrared sensors, here, here's mine right here, come in many different you know f forms but the Arduino one is one and this is you know a company called Sensor um, and they're cheap, they're like five, six bucks uh, and basically what it consists of is an LED that shoots basically an infrared signal or light and that's a red light that the human eye cannot see that's why you don't see anything lighting up right now even though it's on and then this is the receiver that actually i guess i don't know the the actual way that works but the res you need a receiver for, for the light to bounce back into um and apparently infrared it, it also works on on heat to a certain degree so you know i'm just learning about this stuff now but um the uh, sensor, uh, I didn't realize, has, has, has an indication light when it's being interrupted, which is a little tiny micro LED right in the middle. So that lights up when the, when the light path is being interrupted. Um, now, 
I had to connect that obviously to the you know the Uno and program the Uno to tell that sensor what to do. So on the computer, you know, through through the USB um, uh, interface, uh, I downloaded the the free software for programming these things, and I saw on uh, one, on a YouTube video a guy programming a simple detection system with just like a regular LED light just to tell you that it's on. Now the reason I have the LED there is because I didn't realize that there was an LED already in the um, in the in the infrared sensor. But I'm glad I, I did this because what's gonna end up happening is that I'm gonna run long wires from these inputs to a place somewhere, like I said before, either on the building or, or up there. Um, and then I'm gonna obviously connect this, this LED to it so that when that gets triggered, you know, obviously the little light's gonna go on, but I'm not gonna see that because it's going to be way deep in there. I'm not gonna see it. But it's gonna send a signal also to this LED. So as I'm backing up, once I see that LED go off, there or there, I'll know that I'm right at the end or near the end and I have to stop. Um, so here's how it works. Um, once you program the board, you can disconnect it from, uh, from the computer. And then all you gotta do is get some kind of power source into the board so that it, it runs. Uh, so you could either just get a, a five volt AC plug just to go into there, or what I did is I, I took the same exact USB cable that I was plugging into the computer, and just ran it to a to one of those iPhone chargers, which is five volts. So it's the same thing; it doesn't matter as long as you get five volts in there somehow. Obviously, it's running; the lights are on, and there's nothing weird; it's not burning out or anything. Um, so. Let me just uh, demonstrate how this works before I, you know, elongate these these wires and hook it up inside, you know, in the location that I'm looking to to detect. So basically, how this works is there is a uh, a light source coming from here uh, that's going to throw a light a certain a certain uh, distance um, before it doesn't matter anymore. How you know? Uh, what's in front of it. So right now it's not being detected because the light is is Set to go a shorter path than this covered hopper here So I have it the way I adjusted that is through these little uh, Screws here. So as you go, I believe counterclockwise makes the path smaller or shorter and clockwise makes it further and Like you know likewise with, with this one even though I, don't, I didn't really have to touch this one at all It, it picks it up anyway, but I guess if you want to go real far and it's not picking it up, I guess you have to open this one up as well to, you know, to, to catch the light on the return path. Um, but it's working. I, I need a very minimal distance anyway, because I'm going to put this sensor right next to the track or really close to the track. So I really, the path or the length of the, the uh, um, light only needs to be millimeters. Uh, so here's how it works. Once you interrupt the uh, the light beam, you see the light go on. So that's telling me that it's being activated. And again, that's through the software from the from the Arduino, from the Uno. And obviously, once I release that or or clear the light path again, it turns back off. So the idea is that when this light goes on, it's also going to set off the LED light on the on the um, Uno. So let's watch that happen. As soon as I uh, interrupt, you see the lights going on. And you know that when I watched the video originally from the person that was programming this, he had a one thousandth of a second set up or something like that. Like maybe even a little longer. So that when you would interrupt this, the LED would take, you know, basically a second to turn on before uh, it, it actually activated. And, and likewise, when you released it, it would still be on at this point, and then it would turn off like a second later. But he, he also showed a way to cancel it out, so it happens immediately. And I need to know immediately because, you know, I'm going to put this right at the end of the track. This way I don't waste space by, you know, trying to detect it too early. 
Now, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put the sensor on the side so that as the cars come through, it'll detect the minute it uh, interrupts it. So right there, I'll know that that's the end of the car. And then obviously I'm gonna leave a little bit of distance in case you know I can't stop the locomotive fast enough. So there's a little bit of a buffer there for, you know, for error. <clears throat> now, like I said before, um, you know, this is only throwing the light this far. As you can see, watch what happens when I, when I take my hand and move it further. As I go further, it starts to, right there, it starts to release. So th that light beam is only going about this far before it stops working. See, that doesn't do anything. But as soon as I get it a little closer, that's how it's throwing the light. Now, I don't even need it to go that far. I really only need it to go up to this track here. So I'm going to adjust that without knocking all this stuff over because I have it kind of propped up right now. And I'm going to adjust it so that it only goes up to this car. So what I do is I basically go until it turns off there. So it's throwing the, the light shorter than the distance of that car. So what I'm going to do now is just bring it back up a little until it goes solid. And now, yeah, that means that it's throwing the light that far. So this way it's not picking up anything else. So the reason that's important is because when you put it in the location, it, it has to know how far, if there's like a wall here, see what I mean? It has to know how far to throw the light before it gets interrupted. So, you know, even that's a little too far, I have to kind of back it off a little bit. So there, so there's a wall here, which there would be like extremely close, it's not that close. It's not interrupting the light, but that is. So again, that, that would be the wall, and this is the car. So, you know, again, that, that light is going to turn on out here while this is functioning inside there all the way. I'm gonna put it all the way at the end of this, which is the end of the track. So, I mean, I think that's gonna be an easy fix. And, you know, I was originally gonna go with a buzzer and, you know, something a little bit more like obnoxious. But I think this is a, a great way to just kinda, you know, watch for that light as you're backing up the, the train. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'll be able to detect what's going on there. So if for some reason in the future I decide to, you know, put different length cars, like let's say, you know, I have like a, like a 70 footer and then like a 40 and then like a 50, like, you know, obviously the train length is going to change. So even though right now I know I can get 12 of these hoppers in there, you know, sometimes the couplers are a little bit longer or shorter, or like I said, if I decide to put other things in there, now I, I'm not going to be able to say, okay, well, 12 cars, because it's going to be obviously a different length before the track runs out at the end. So whatever cars at the end, the light's going to be basically facing it this way on the side and it's going to pick it up and then obviously uh, detect it with that red light. Now I can also put it so that it's it's facing the back of the car, you know, put, make the light go this way rather than sideways. It's the same thing, you know, it'll just be like as the car is coming through, it'll detect it that way. But here's my thing with that. I feel like the, you know, end scale is so, so narrow that I feel like it might it might actually miss the light by, by shooting the light past the sides of the car. So it might not be detecting it, and I'm gonna keep backing it up, and then I'm gonna end up crashing it or derailing it. So I think by doing it sideways, it's it's got a lot more surface area. And obviously I gotta be careful with the height of this thing. When I mount it, it's gotta hit the, side, the body of the car because if it goes under, it might, again, shoot the light past the trucks and under the car and not detect it so um you know uh i'll play around with it until i get it right but you know the only thing that i can foresee going wrong is if i'm if i'm putting a, a flat car in there where it's got very little you know surface area on the side and the light won't be able to be detected and i don't even think that's going to be a problem um because you know well i guess i spoke too soon and uh, what I was fearing is actually uh, becoming a reality here. So here's the problem. This color car, which is very similar to that, is detected without a problem, as you can see. Now it's a it's a you know a bigger surface area. Um, 
and when you put the center beam car in there, the problem is that it's, like I said, small surface area here, and then it's got all these holes, which allows the light to go past it. So when I tried to do it before, it actually failed, and it was not detecting at all. Now it's detecting because I realized that um, uh, this sensor, uh, once you open it, it detects light faster or slower. So I guess that's to um, allow the sensor to not misfire when there's a lot of light in the room. You know, so I'm gonna have to adjust that when I put it into the area in here because it's gonna be pitch black in there. Uh, so what I did is I, I lowered it or I opened the eye up a little bit, I guess, and now it's now it's seeing it. Now it's it's not sometimes it's a little flickery and that's the best I could get it because if I go any any more one way or the other it, it doesn't work. So chances of me putting a flat car or a center beam car in there are zero pretty pretty much zero because that's not the kind of car that would go in there anyway. So that's a good thing. Uh, but this is interesting. I, I was not expecting this. Uh, the anything black does not set it off at all so it's like a color issue um and i don't know if it's like just black or if it's like very dark cars but it seems like the other cars that are you know even a dark blue or a very very dark brown they're still getting picked up uh, it's just a black car that that is not reacting at all and i thought it was that the light was going under the, the tan car but it's, it's not it's it's literally black things don't allow for it. Look, that's black and that's a solid surface. I'm putting it right up to it and nothing. So, but now watch the white part. There you go. See, and even if I'm far away, it'll pick it up. So it has to be some kind of light color. I guess the infrared light um, reacts that way. Um, so, um, unless it's, you know, the system that only, you know, it needs some kind of reflective surface because the light's got to hit whatever surface and, and push it back into into this eye. I know that with my crossing gates, they're infrared, infrared also, but it, the, the light beam's going across the track. So it's facing it, you know, th this part is, is facing the light directly. So even black locomotives and tan cars and everything are, are fine with that. So maybe I'm going to have to get that kind of sensor where it's one on each side for it to work better. But... Here's the way I'm looking at it. Um, like I said before, the cars that are going in here are going to be light colored for the most part. Um, hoppers. So even this dark blue one is still being recognized without a problem at all. So I think I'm going to be okay. But I, I, I did find that interesting that anything, you know, anything black does not um, set it off. I guess it just sees it as darkness and uh, it needs some kind of light to reflect off of. So, that's very interesting. Anyways, that, that's the end of this video. Um, the next video you're going to see is probably going to be once I'm done mounting this in there and testing it out. So, uh, that'll be next. Obviously, I'm going to have to mount this um, Uno board under or near the sensor. Um, so that I don't have to run very long cables to this. I'd rather run, you know, three short cables than, you know, two long cables for the power source. For, you know, plus and minus. Uh, I'm probably going to end up using it as a, uh, a regular DC or AC plug rather than the USB because this is just too, you know, it's hard to extend this. Um, so that's it. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.